Hello and welcome everyone to this incredible webinar. My name is Odette Worrell and I am Michelle Kramer and you are about to discover how to add love, laughter and passion into your life with the help of Ada Azaria. Ada is a holistic health counselor and she is also the founder of Chocolada, an organic and raw chocolate company. Before we start, we want to tell you a little bit about why we decided to host Ada and this particular webinar. Michelle, my colleague and I, are both committed to one thing. We are committed to you. We want you to experience what we have with just a few little additions into your life as well as your diet. So for all you chocolate lovers out there like myself, this webinar will bring you some good news. Real chocolate is actually good for you. Without further ado, here's Ada. Hello everyone, my name is Ada Zaria and as you have just heard, I'm the founder of Chocolata. I'm so excited to be here today and help you to get ready for the special month of love. So I have a lot of material to cover today and I want to make this beginning section short but I do have to mention it because this webinar is about your health, mood and how to support it. Love is the one thing that maintains health, focus and creative mind, it sustains your heart, destroys stress and can overcome life-threatening illnesses. Statistics show that when love is present in your life, chances of recovering from a surgery are overwhelmingly improved. Dr. Sir, Dr. Bernie Siegel, who wrote Love, Medicine, Miracles, has dedicated his life to working with cancer patients and said that this was one main turning point in patients' ability to overcome cancer. Uh, I would like to add here for our listeners that on top of Bernie Siegel's uh, research, there has also been a recent study of nearly 300 married couples and it found that women that were in unhappy relationships were more likely to have high blood pressure, excess abdominal fat, which none of us want, and other risk factors for heart disease. Another study recently conducted um, found that men in relationships outlive men that are single by an average of 20 years. That's huge. So love, or rather the lack of love, creates stress and the types of negative thoughts and environment um, that we put ourselves can encourage cortisol, a hormone stressor, and acidity in the body. So what that means is that when there's lack of love in your life, it literally feeds all forms of dis-ease. Wow, that's amazing. So ladies, let's share with our guests what they can do to support love in their life before we get into the fun food part. Here we go. Absolutely. Here's an example of how negative thinking can create a physical response. Start with the thinking that is so prevalent in our society. How many, us, how many of us dress to hide the parts of our body because we're ashamed of? How do you think this gets internalized even if we shut it out? Let's take a look at the images on the screen to see what happens in our bodies when we choose to hate it rather than love it. If this is the impact our thoughts have on the water, imagine the impact our thoughts have on our bodies, which are mostly made of water. Folks, take a moment right here just to stop and look at the image on your screens if you are indeed on a computer rather than a phone. I'd like for you to see the difference between what thoughts do when you have negative thinking going on and the thoughts that um, create positive changes in our body. Other than loving yourself, it's also important to nurture love for others. It's easy to find flaws in others, but it's even easier to find positive attributes that each one of us has. When we focus on the positive qualities in people around us and put our energy towards encouraging that trait, those qualities are actually amplified. Wayne Dyer once stated, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And it does work. So next time you find yourself grappling for a solution, to a tears moment with someone you care for. Try looking at it from a standpoint of seeing the good in the situation and how it's allowing you to bring either the best of yourself or the worst. Choose love and watch the situation shift as quickly as the thought comes to mind. Now let's get to the third step, okay? So feeding our bodies so that our moods, 
actions and focus are working synergistically to create balance with what we're feeding our minds and hearts. Go for it, Ada. Thank you, Michelle. Um, the food that we put in our bodies create chemical reactions that affect our moods, focus, energy levels, and responses. As a result, this will affect our daily activities, relationships, and even our careers. Let's look at a few examples of how food can create a physical reaction. Think of children that have had way too much sugar in a day. How about an adult that has had one too many cups of coffee with way too much sugar? Here's another example. How does a person that eats mostly vegetables behave as opposed to the person that mostly eats meat? Ada, I have to just interject something here. I am always, always, always telling people that if they really want to know the difference between somebody that eats, um, for example, meat as opposed to somebody that eats vegetables, for them to actually think of how many aggressive vegetarians they know. There are very few out there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Exactly like that. Well, balance is a key. Many people that eat meat often crave sugar because one foot is contractive and the other one is expansive. And our bodies are so smart that they always create cravings because they're trying to create balance. One of the most negative foods that affect our mood and damages our bodies on many levels is processed sugar. Isn't that the truth? Now don't worry, we are not going to leave you without a delicious treat to add sweetness to your life. Now, it's just not going to be the kind of sweetness that we know is going to send you on that roller coaster ride. Michelle, when I say processed sugar, I don't only mean that white powder like substance that we add to our foods by the spoonful. I also mean foods that turn into sugar and create the same reaction in our bodies like white bread, pasta, bagels, and more cereals. It doesn't only send our bodies on a blood sugar roller coaster ride throughout the day, it, create bad it creates bad moods, more cravings, and affects everyone around us. Do you notice that when you have um, a bagel for breakfast that you get hungry within just an hour? This is your blood sugar taking that roller coaster ride I was talking about earlier. Well, without going into too much detail, sugar alone is responsible for encouraging and feeding many common diseases of our time, such as obesity, diabetes, hormonal imbalances, candida, and cancer. Cancer cells' primary food is sugar. Plus, sugar encourages premature wrinkles, unhealthy skin, unhealthy skin coloring, and promotes aging. And we don't want that. Now, let's jump off this bad sugar ride and focus on a great substitute for healthy foods with some wonderful treats that Mother Nature herself has in store for us. What I want to concentrate on today is deconstructing your cravings for sugar by replacing it with healthy, nutritious treats, many of which happen to be aphrodisiacs. The major food of today will be the one food I have focused the most in my own life. In fact, I have made a career out of it. Chocolate! Chocolate or cacao bean is uh, what chocolate is made from. So as I like to save the best for last, let's look at some other ingredients that will be the part of this Valentine treat you will be given the recipe for at the end of the webinar. So let's start with uh, vanilla. The scent and flavor of vanilla arouses lust and raises sexual desires. In the 1700s, vanilla was recommended by physicians and alchemists to be drunk as a tincture or infusion in order to ensure male potency. Many do not know that vanilla comes from an orchid. And the tale has it that Xanad, a young daughter of the Mexican fertility goddess, fell in love. Unable to marry a mortal due to her divine nature, she transformed herself into the plant that would provide pleasure and happiness. She became the vanilla orchid so that she could forever belong to her human love and his people. Wow, that's an amazing story. I never knew that. Thank you, Ada. Yeah, well, there's actually another legend, which is said that vanilla and cacao were divine lovers who came back as plants. Therefore, they have such an amazing synergy together. Perhaps this is why Aztecs used vanilla mixed with chocolate as an aphrodisiac. Well, other than Aztec's way to add vanilla into your day, my suggestion on Valentine's Day would be to fill tall champagne glasses to the rim and add a vanilla bean for a heady, bubbly treat. Ladies, get an unscented lotion and add some vanilla to it. Let's move on to the cinnamon. Cinnamon was the spice used by Queen of Sheba to captivate King Solomon. 
Cinnamon is associated with sweet desserts, uh, dessert types foods here in the States, but in other countries it's a spice considered useful for producing heat within the body. It goes without saying that this heat is most likely responsible for an increased sexual appetite. Cinnamon is also rich in chromium, which helps balance blood sugar levels. So if you sprinkle the spice on your morning fruit or oatmeal, it will help you with your sugar cravings. But be careful, too much of this and you might not make it out the door to work. You know, this is my favorite one, the cinnamon. I put it all over my oatmeal in the morning and then I get to swim uh, like a shark in the pool. It really uh, stimulates my blood sugar level. And you stay in bed all day? No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Oh. All right, avocado. Oh, Ada, I have to say something here with the avocado before you get started. And I think my client might be listening. Um, so you know who you are. Um, I have to interject here this story because I happen to know that there is this, um, this client that heard you tell this story once before when we were making the videotape. He um, has a hard time in the kitchen, so he wanted to see something being prepared. So this particular story so impacted him that he can't eat avocados now. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay, so men who are listening on this call, just beware, just beware. Who was it about that? Uh, you know who it was. He was there making the videotape. At oh, any wow. rate. Well, okay, well here is my story. Over many centuries, the avocado has maintained its reputation as an aphrodisiac. Legend has it that the Aztec word for the avocado tree is avocati roughly translated as testicle tree. No doubt the name arose because of the way the fruit of the tree hung in pairs, reminding those ancient people of human male anatomy. Further to this thought, apparently the young Aztec women were confined indoors while this erotic fruit with aphrodisiac qualities was being harvested. So you can see why my client would have a hard time eating something that's considered a testicle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sorry, Klein. <laughs> uh, well, actually, he should be eating it because avocado contains vitamin E, sometimes called the sex vitamin. Ooh. Vitamin E promotes the production of sex hormones, which support attraction, mood, and desire. Avocados are so rich in vitamin B6 and potassium, also essential for the production of sex hormones. You know, I just want to say also the avocados are great. I do them daily in my smoothies, and they're just delicious. And I'm wondering if that's why the cats outside have been following me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, quickly, let's go to the next one, Ada, before she gets into another tale. All right, okay. 